morning, Sunday schoolers. Good morning. Thank you and welcome. Thank you for joining me for our mid-month check where we are talking about protecting the blessing. Let us pray and we'll get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you. We do not take for granted the opportunity that we have to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor for giving us activity of our limbs, giving us relatively good health and strength, God. I thank you, God, that as you go before us in this mid-month check, you have deposited a dream, a vision, a purpose in us, and it is intended because we know that you are an intentional God. You are unchanging and your word never returns void so we pray god that as we unpack this word and these verses god that you speak to us intently and in tunely god help us just to keep our ears and our eyes attuned to everything that you have for us so that we can manifest your glory on earth as it is in heaven and that we operate in purpose being steadfast and immovable. Thank you for everything you have done and everything that you will do. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. I think I just made that ditty up. <laughs> so we are talking about, we are continuing in protecting the blessing. I know in Sunday school, we discuss about staying the course and how um, we have been given a vision, we have been given a goal, we have been given a purpose in life, and we are to stay the course. We are to be um, unmoved by the things that may come along, along the way in our journey, but just so that we can be on course for what God has in our lives, the plan that God has for our lives to move us forward. So our base scripture for our mid-month check will be coming from 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. And it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So your labor is not in vain, being not weary, being not um unchanged or um un or remaining unfazed as things change around you you are being steadfast and you are staying the course so how do we protect the blessing that god has um has planted in our spirit the blessing that god has put upon our life the people that god has surrounded us with so that we can operate in purpose we're protecting the blessing by being steadfast being on course i've heard this story many times before and i know you've probably heard it as well but if you know a pilot has a course and when they're in the air they have a course if they go even a degree off of that course it could put them in an entirely different city one degree one one degree off of the course and i feel that god is speaking to us and telling us in this time frame that as he is listening to us he's um watching our heart's posture and listening to us intently and um moving in the ways that it is going to help us to learn and grow in him um and help us to manifest his glory on earth as it is in heaven and move and operate in our purpose he wants us to be steadfast in the things that he has built us in he wants us to be unmovable and unchangeable as things change around us now in sunday school i said something to the effects of staying the course and akin it to um people telling you don't do um, things the same way that's considered and expect different results. That's considered insanity. My point in saying that, and I wanted to come back in mid-month check and correct that. My point in saying that was that we want to be steadfast to an unchanging God when things are added to our circumstances, whether they be um, different life changes, different interruptions, or even things that may seem enticing that are yielding instant results. We want to make sure that we are being steadfast in what we have been rooted in in this time frame because our blessings are sprouting from what we are rooted in, what is unchanging, what has, uh, what we have fertilized, what we have planted, what, um, what people have come along and watered through the spirit of God. Those things are going to take harvest. And if your 
if in the last moment you decide to switch up the fertilizer and you want to add a little um, potpourri to your fertilizer, then you're going to yield different results. That's that one degree shift that we were talking about a little earlier in our uh, pilot example. There, That's that one degree shift that can add um, false results to the very intended purpose that God has for your life. So we're being steadfast and immovable. Why are we being steadfast? Because we are spiritual beings. Sunday schoolers, we are spiritual beings and we have fleshly bodies around these spiritual beings. So we are growing our spirit woman and our spirit man. So our light has to shine regardless of what's going on around us. Um, and the very essence of our character has to blow through the water of everything that is put into our pathway, being uh, staying the course and being steadfast. So... I also wrote in the notes and you know I'm reading my notes this year because I want to read it directly as God gives it to me and God has been giving me some words ahead of time like I got this mid-month check maybe two or three days after our Sunday school so I literally had my study session very early on and I was like thank you God these things aren't coming on on the spot anymore they might still come on the spot throughout the year but as of right now God was telling me to say that there is a difference between being steadfast and going around in aimless circles. So that's what I meant by um, putting putting some feet to your faith versus um, versus like the difference between like being steadfast being unchanged and unmoved and unfazed by everything that's added unto you and then being in a position where you're allowing um, God to show you different pathways to yield better results. So that's that's what I'm saying. Like going around in aimless circles and expecting a difference would be insanity. Um, different results would be insanity. But if you are being steadfast in a thing, that means that whatever you were rooted in, whatever you started your journey in, whatever God has been um, growing you in, you don't want to steer from that path. You from that pathway. You don't want to veer from that pathway and go and try something new in the last hour because you're already about to yield a harvest. You're about to yield a harvest off of everything that you have worked so hard towards. So, um. What I have been doing since the top of the year and what I admonish you to do, and this is a homework assignment, so try for one month, just for one month, every morning that you um, get an opportunity to wake up, just wake up, and this is what I do. I wake up and the first thing that I say is, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be a part of the plan that you have for my life. So what that does is I'm surrendering my day before it even starts. I'm letting God know that as he hears me and he's listening intently and intently for the desires of my heart, that I know that all of this is working within his perfect will. So if things don't happen in my time frame, they don't happen in my timeline or the, the way that I envisioned it, it's because I am operating God's perfect will for my life, not his permissive will. And for the people who are new to like church or um, Bible or churchy words, churchy phrases, um, what I mean by that is that my um, his will and not my will is going to be done regardless. God has a, an intended purpose to reconcile the church and the people of the church back to its into its initial plan for um for life god had an initial plan we veered off that plan very early on he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for us to reconcile us back and we are contending for the faith to move back towards that intended purpose and so um god be glorified on this here creation that he has made and in doing such um I'm letting God know at the top of every morning that his will and not my will be done. I am going to stay the course regardless of if I have a desire to move into a certain area in life or to have a new relationship or whatever the case may be. If that thing didn't come um, by my set timeline, it's because um, it's because it's not in God's perfect will 
at that time. And I have to be steadfast and immovable in knowing that my ever and unchanging God, that his word and his word concerning my life is not going to return void to him, that everything is going to manifest in its time frame, and that I am surrendering at the very top of my day that God has his will over my entire life. I want to be a part of his perfect will, not his permissive will. So I would say in this next month, just go forth. And every time you wake up, just make sure the first thing that you say out of your mouth is at least thank you to God. But if you want to say thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be a part of the plan that you have for my life. That's letting God know, hey, take the will, Jesus. Take the will, God. You got it. I'm here and I'm ready to be sent. I'm ready to work. I'm not going to be changed by the circumstances or anything that's going on around me because I know that you have a plan to manifest in my life. So uh, I did also write some extra notes, but we'll take a coffee break because I did actually make coffee and um, <laughs> and I wanted to share because I have Don Francisco. Um, I have Don Francisco coffee today my go-to but I wanted to share my cup because it says don't quit your daydream don't quit your daydream so that means that as God starts to speak to you God is starting to give you dreams and visions and things like that God is starting to enlighten you on the things that he has for you and the plans and the pathways that he has for you and as you're not getting weary as you're not um as you're not being moved by the different changes and circumstances of life, but as you're being steadfast and immovable, you are going to be given dreams, daydreams, night dreams, all kinds of dreams. Don't quit your daydream. That means be not weary. Don't quit your daydream. I don't know what it means in uh, Walmart terms. I got this mug at Walmart, but that's what I interpret it as. So don't quit your daydream. Yeah. So the coffee is nice and hot. really warm and good so I am gonna set this down and grab my notebook so how do we protect the blessing we protect the the blessing by being steadfast when things around us seem to be yielding different results let's say that God has given you a vision going into 2022 that things are going to suddenly start happening for you and um you're thinking that certain things that you desired are going to suddenly start happening to you, but things suddenly start happening in a different direction, the opposite direction. They're yielding different results than what you had envisioned. Um, it's learning to be immovable and unchanged by those things, but still letting your light shine and still moving forward, knowing that God has you, not being weary, not giving up, being able to be steadfast in a period of long suffering. Um, protecting the blessing also means stay in the course, even when your timeline doesn't match with the timeline of God. As we had spoken earlier, you may have a vision for something and you may run in your mind. I know I do. When God gives me a vision, I run in my mind from A to Z. He may say, oh, you're going to have this job and you're going to start and you're going to be promoted. And I'm already thinking, oh, by year two, I'm going to be moving into this and I'm going to be doing this and I'm going to be doing that. And I start to plan it in my mind from A to Z. And God's only given me one step to take. Just go ahead and submit this, um, this email here and submit this resume here and let me do the rest. And I'll go into my whole little uh, plan and how things work. So it's staying the course, even when that looks like two years from now, you'll get that blessing. When it looks like um, whatever you particularly pr prayed for does not happen in that particular way, that it happens in a totally different way or it doesn't happen at all the way that you thought that it would. It's knowing how to stay the course and being immovable because you're growing this spirit man inside and you're surrendering your day and your life to God's plan for you. Um, protecting the blessing also is being on course and letting your light shine regardless of the circumstances or people's behavior around you. So 
I have this story. I've always been like kind of the churchy friend and <laughs> in my circles. And particularly with my group of friends, I have a few friends that I've had since college and they know that my light is going to shine and I'm going to be happy and I'm going to say good morning. Regardless of whether I get a good morning back, I'm going to make sure that my light is shining. And as a result, people see that. So my friend, she went on this beautiful trip and I won't embarrass her by mentioning her name or anything but she went on this beautiful trip and she went off to Jordan and she had a great time and um I had just saw her story on Instagram and I was so moved and things um things like that but when she came back she brought me um and I have it here she brought me some beads and it was a it's a rosary but they're beads that were dipped in the jordan river and my eyes my life my spirit everything lit up and everything just i, I got so emotional even when i open this i still get emotional like i'm fighting back right now but um i get emotional because of the reference that she knows knowing me from college knowing me through school knowing me still being my friend she knows my light she knows that god shines through me she knows that um that I am just she knows that I would appreciate something like this she didn't go give it to anyone else it wasn't just a um like a keychain gift where you get everybody the same keychain she knows specifically that this is something that would touch me to my very heart and I just thank her for that I thank you for that publicly and I thanked her for that and she knows that I got very emotional about it because um my light was shining regardless of the parties we went to, regardless of the different circumstances that came up during school, after school, or whatever the case may be, um, regardless of the changes that have happened, um, where we we were at one point we were in school and we were studying different different religions, we were studying different philosophies and things like that, and getting to know different practices in life. And I still chose Christ as my my way to follow. Regardless of what's going on around you, and there's a lot of things being introduced into um, our lives and into our culture and being intertwined into our culture, we want you to be steadfast and immovable, always working and abounding in the very root of the foundation that God has given you, knowing that uh, regardless of what smoke signals are sent up um, in today's age, whatever is um, burned on behalf or sacrificed on behalf or worshipped on behalf, that you know that you're here healing, your strength, your provision, your peace all comes from God. And that's what's fertilized your purpose. That's what's fertilized your dream. And that's what's going to manifest the harvest for your blessing. So that is Sunday school. That is our mid-month check. I kept you a little longer for the mid-month check than the Sunday school, but I just want you to make sure that you are moving, especially into the rest of this year, knowing who you are and whose you are and not being changed by the things that are around you. So I hope to see you. Please make sure that you hit those um, notification bells because other than uh, the... Instagram post. That'll be the only way that you will be reminded about our YouTube videos. We have Sunday school every first Sunday of the month. We have our mid-month check every third Sunday of the month. If there's ever five Sundays, you'll have an extra Sunday off. But consistently, we will be here every first and third Sunday. Please tell a friend, like, follow, share, on your uh, social media platforms, please follow us at underscore coffee with Christ on Instagram. You may also email us for any dialogue or anything like that. But I will see you next month for a brand new Sunday school. Have a great one.